A few months ago, my wife and I decided to go see a movie for our date night. And we had heard that John Krasinski, or Jim from The Office, as most of you probably know him, had directed this new movie starring him and his wife, Emily Blunt. And my wife and I really liked both of them, so we thought we'd go see it. We didn't know anything about it going in except the title. But as soon as the movie started, we quickly realized two things. One is that the title doesn't lie. It is really quiet. As a matter of fact, it is so quiet that as soon as the movie started, everyone in the theater stopped eating their pop and popcorn because you could literally hear a pin drop in the auditorium. Fortunately, I'd already crushed our bag of popcorn during the previews. And the second thing that we realized is that it's a horror film, especially if you're a parent, particularly of young children. It, it's also a very touching movie. It's probably the closest I've ever come to crying in a horror film. I highly recommend that you go see this in the theater. It's an excellent movie. But as terrifying as that movie was, it pales in comparison to the terror that I felt leading into the draft on Friday night. Ryan Rashog tweeted this out in the morning. Sounds like the Oilers are still aggressively shopping their 10th overall pick in an effort to find some blue line help. And I responded to this tweet with a quote from Luke Skywalker. I have a very bad feeling about this. I think that quite a few people agreed with me since that tweet got 78 likes. And it's really not difficult to understand why. Peter Shirelli has already given up a tremendous amount of assets and money to try and upgrade the team's defense. And quite frankly, I don't blame him because when he took over, it was basically an AHL crew back there. He has traded Taylor Hall, a first round pick, a second round pick, a fourth round pick, a prospect, and dished out over $55 million in salary to try and improve the defensive depth on the roster. So when I heard these rumors about the Oilers potentially trading Clefbaum and the pick to upgrade the D, specifically to add a right shot for the power play, that just made my stomach turn. First of all, Clefbaum has a great contract. I know that he's coming off a lousy season, but he's locked in for a long time at a good rate. That contract will be a huge bargain in two to three years when the cap goes up even more. Secondly, you don't need to trade for a right shot defenseman to one-time pucks from McDavid. A top pairing right shot defenseman is literally the rarest and most sought after asset in the league. It's much simpler to work with what you've got than to move players on and off of your roster. The others just need to adjust their power play strategy. And with new assistant coaches coming in, I believe they're going to do that. And thirdly, if the Oilers had dealt the pick, then last season would have been a complete and utter waste of time from every standpoint. The only silver lining from that dud of a season was that they came out of it with a top 10 draft pick. To trade it away would have been tragically comedic. Tragic for us Oilers fans, comedic to the rest of the league. But then, something wonderful and unexpected happened. The Coyotes decided to go way off board, and that created this bizarre domino effect, leaving the Oilers with their pick of Evan Bouchard, Noah Dobson, and Oliver Wallstrom. I was sitting in this room with three other Oilers fans when it happened, and we couldn't believe their good fortune. That just <laughs> happened. Now, no offense to Oliver Wallstrom, he's a really good player, but I think the Oilers' decision really came down to Dobson versus Bouchard. And this whole thing was so shocking for me because I had voiced my desire for this exact situation to play out in an interview with Oilers Live podcast back in May. Is there anybody you kind of see at number 10 or what do you think the Oilers do with that number 10 pick going into the draft? I certainly hope they keep it and draft someone. I, 
I, I really don't want them to move that pick. Um, there's a lot of good defensemen. I think there's six defensemen ranked in the top 10, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Depends on whose top 10 you're going yeah. with, whose draft rankings. But, I, I mean, I like a lot of those defensemen. I I, I mean, Darlene's not going to be there. Boquist's not going to be there. I don't think Hughes will be. But depending on teams' needs, uh, I would love it if the Oilers got Bouchard or Dobson. Now, when it came time for the Oilers to make their pick, I was hoping they would take Dobson over Bouchard. Now, this is nothing against Bouchard. This was mainly due to Dobson's really strong performance at the Memorial Cup. But after watching a comprehensive YouTube video comparing Dobson and Bouchard, it's very clear why the Oilers chose Bouchard. First of all, his shot. This guy has a cannon from the point. His shooting style really reminds me a lot of Al McInnes. Just like McInnes, he uses a longer stick and winds straight up rather than back and then just lets it rip. Not only does he have a really hard shot, he uses it a ton. He was second overall in the entire Ontario Hockey League in shots on goal last year. For a fan like myself who watched the Oilers fiddle and diddle around with the puck all year long on the power play, Seeing these highlights is almost as exciting as the first time I saw the Lady Marmalade music video when I was 15 years old. Secondly, of the two players, Noah Dobson is definitely the better skater. There's no question about that. But I know for a fact that the Oilers are not concerned with their defensemen rushing the puck up the ice. What they really need is a guy who gets the puck up to McDavid and Dreisaitl quickly and on the tape. And according to Bob McKenzie, Bouchard is the best passer in the draft, even better than Darlene. And third, according to every report that I've read, he's quite close to being ready to play in the NHL. Now that's not to say the Oilers are going to rush him into a prominent role. Unlike when they brought Justin Schultz into the fold, they can actually shelter Bouchard behind guys like Larson and Russell. I could see him getting at least nine games next year, but this is the first time in recent memory that the Oilers will be able to properly bring along a defenseman within a competitive defensive core. The two biggest issues with the Oilers' blue line last year were a lack of threatening point shots and a complete inability to get the puck to their forwards with speed. These two things are literally Bouchard's best attributes as a player. What's so great about this player falling to the Oilers at the draft is there should no longer be this perceived need by the team, media, and bloggers to make a big trade this summer. I, for one, am confident that the Oilers can make the playoffs next year with their current roster. So hopefully the Oilers head office is a nice quiet place for the rest of the summer. I'll see you next time.